was like, I can't get close enough. <laughs> okay, I'll just make sure we're cooking. Looks like we are. Cool. I'm while while Tammy's uh, uh, being uh, Emery's having her way with her, welcome everyone uh, to the Wildcat Sanctuary. Judson here, sitting across from Tammy, our founder and executive director. Uh, we missed out on a Wildcat wrap up yesterday. As things go, it is a busy, busy uh, life here at the Wildcat Sanctuary. So today we're going to do uh, our Wildcat wrap up. Yeah. And we're also going to talk a little bit more about our Cats in Crisis campaign and how everyone has been uh, sharing their generosity and, and making a difference for the Cats in Crisis here at the Wildcat Sanctuary as well as those yet to come. Uh, Emery, do you Thanks have anything Emery. you'd like to add to the introduction? Emery cannot get close enough right now. Um, I love that Emery, when she first came, she was so independent and now she's becoming such a love bug. So um, it's fun to have a cat that's cuddly without biting me like Mr. Oreo. I was going to say, Oreo, <laughs> he, he's a love bug, but uh, he, it's, he's rather unique where he likes getting a taste of you after he's <laughs> yeah. given you some love. Um, so welcome again, everyone. Happy to have everyone here. I always like a kind of formal setting and um, you know, we get to hear from Tammy during these Wildcat wrap-ups. But like I said, we're going to expand on that a little bit. And first, um, let's talk about our Cats in Crisis campaign. And there's been a lot of moving parts in the Cats in Crisis campaign. We initially launched it with the announcement of two Argentina tigers in need of rescue, Violetta and Lucy. Yes, and Violetta and Lucy have been um, two tigers that we've it's been a long process, uh, and everybody kind of knows their background, that they're uh, at the Mendoza Zoo, which is the same zoo Chapino and Saltina were at. Um, and we had no idea that they were still there uh, since 2016. We know we were asked in 2016, but because they were tigers um, and endangered species, CITES one, the process was a lot longer. Um, but now, in retrospect, it would have been a lot quicker than the years they've been waiting. So we've said yes, but based on their age and based on um, going back and forth, um, there's been some medical concerns with uh, Violetta, and um, we never want to move an animal all the way to TWS, especially if it's not in their best interest because it is a long haul. So um, our vets have been going back and forth this week. We actually had to engage the USDA, um, who actually manages kind of imports, exports on health of big cats um, because uh, Violetta on top of it has anemia, which mm -hmm. they're trying to determine what that's from. Um, a cat at 17, it could be from kidney disease, but unfortunately they didn't have blood work on her kidneys and uh, we don't want to knock her down just for that. We want to make sure if she gets knocked down again, it's for everything she would need for a move. Um, the anemia could also be caused by uh, cancer, you know, at 17, we don't know. Um, and then we do know that she has um, another medical condition, uh, which is a parasite that kind of eats the skin. Hmm. And so that's had to really looked at because we have to be careful of her health, but also what we're bringing into the U.S. So right now that's under um, final advisement by the USDA and getting more information. Um, to determine if moving Violetta to TWS is the best move. So we'll update everybody as we know. Lucy appears that she's healthy, but she really doesn't have um, much medical history either. So we don't know if it's just been quiet and we don't know her history, even though she's younger at 15, um, or um, if it's just because there's lack of medical information. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately that happens a lot on rescues, even zoos um, that have changed hands or evolved in other countries. And so that's kind of where we're at there, but we will let everybody know as soon as we know. Um, and then of course, if we cannot accept one or both based on health care, we want to follow through on what the plans are uh, for the rest of their life so that they still get quality care where they're at um, until the decision, the best decision is mm -hmm. made. So. We're, we're in for the long haul, exactly. whether they're here or they're in Argentina. Yeah, and, I, and, I, and I'm sure I appreciate that, that update, and everyone does. And, and just, you know, from the perspective of managing an international rescue like that, you know, how intensive of a process it, you know, has kind of this communication been since we've, you know, made this announcement? Yeah, so it's an ongoing communication, but there's a lapse based 
based on um, translation, based on time zones, based on them getting information. It is not like it was with the Ukraine Cubs where it was 5.30 every morning, you mm -hmm. know, checking on everything. So we've had a little bit more breathing room on this. But it's also, we have to be coordinating with the USDA based on any medical information we see. And then the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Permit has been, um, you know, was we applied for it in February, and that's how long it takes, and we still don't have approval on that permit, but we move forward as if we do because there's so many things um, that have to coordinate. And then once we all that comes together, we still have to coordinate transportation, crates, flights, uh, customs, you know, and all that. So mm -hmm. we, we are, I would say, maybe a third of the way through the process right now. Yeah, yeah, that's something that, that just kind of just gave me perspective and scale to how massive an undertaking, mm -hmm. you know, just like you said, the time zone difference, the bureaucratic process that's really long and drawn out. And so I think that's a good segue into speaking of other things that <laughs> yeah. keep the executive director busy throughout the day. Um, and just every, you know, every day and week here at the Wildcat Sanctuary, we mentioned the small cat crisis in Compass in our in our cats in crisis campaign yes and so you know obviously um you know being aware that very much that we face the big cat crisis and we're happy that federal legislation has been passed we're still very much here at the wildcat sanctuary facing what we call a small cat crisis and how your time is is consumed fielding a lot of that and absolutely the big cat crisis is still alive and well but sanctuaries we've built capacity knowing that this legislation might um, pass. And so the good news is that sanctuaries around the country have capacity to help big cats when calls come in. Um, the issue we have is that a lot of sanctuaries have no capacity left for small cats because mm -hmm. the requests are so frequent and so a lot. And when we're talking small cats, we're talking lynx, servals, bobcats. Um, we're not talking even Bengals and hybrids. That even gets even more uh, less space. Mm -hmm. So just this week, we have multiple, multiple bobcats um, that need placement. And as we reached out through the Big Cat Sanctuary Alliance and other, there is no accredited sanctuaries that have space for bobcats. Um, and when things like that happen, it's easy for us to say yes or no. If they're in Florida and say, hey, can you help this bobcat we are full too mm -hmm. but it's different if it's uh, somebody in your own backyard or um, somebody in the industry that is struggling that you know has been a wonderful animal advocate for years and asking for a favor then we we do what we have to do to accommodate so I'm working on that case and then many sanctuaries received a call or an email I should say on a serval in Norway that um, was a pet serval mm -hmm. escaped and now um, authorities are saying they want to euthanize and uh, there are a lot of animal rights groups that want to help the serval and just say, hey, can we accommodate? We'll help get her to you or another sanctuary. And I think they read the stories of Argentina cats and Ukraine cats and even our Canada cats and they see the ending and go, oh, the sanctuary does international, they can take them. But again, educating on that process that if that cat's on a euthanasia list right now, by the time we could pull everything together four or five months down the road with the process that takes for import export, um, you know, that might not be a possibility for wow. that cat. So uh, as of this week, like I said, there was multiple, multiple bobcats on the list. Um, we have five servals on the list, uh, at least three or four Bengals. And so the small cat crisis, you know, people say, what happens when you can't help? And, you know, that's a question all of us sanctuaries are asking is that we have to educate more because it's going to take many, many, many years to even get anybody to consider a law about the small cat crisis. So it's really an educational tool in trying to make people understand that they should not be getting these animals as pets. And, and as it stands here at the Wildcat Sanctuary, the uh, the small cats, like you mentioned, and the hybrids included, they make up the largest contingent of our rescued population yes. here. Yeah, it, it's uh, it's crazy that we have over 41 hybrids and domestics. And what's sad is how many times we're saying no. Mm -hmm. um, I remember when I started the sanctuary, I said we will no cats left behind, and we really try to live by that. But when you get into the Bengal and Savannah cat population, I don't think there's any way. Um, we give them referrals to other sanctuaries. Once we even call other sanctuaries, and there's so few, so once they can't, then we give them uh, the rescue groups. Um, and so we're trying to give resources, but we just can't say yes to all of them. We yeah. just can't right now. 
Yeah, it's it's a lot, and and that's kind of just like you said. Is at the end of the day, we're wanting to give perspective, we're wanting to educate and create awareness about about. And the followers help us. Yeah. Because I can't tell you how many times everybody out there tells me, "Hey, I have a friend that wanted to get a Bengal. I sent them your information. I sent them, you know, all that, and they changed their mind." And I'm like, "That's great." Or they say they still want a Bengal, but they're going to do it from a rescue group, which is great because those Bengals need homes, mm -hmm. and they'll also know what the problems already are and why that cat was surrendered so exactly i'm going to interject and maybe just welcome some people who have uh, joined us uh happy happy friday everyone you're tuned in live to the wildcat sanctuary judson and tammy here we're talking a little cats in crisis we're going to be moving into uh kind of some of the topics uh covered in Saint, uh, tammy's weekly uh wildcat wrap up yeah. Um, let's uh, maybe talk some cat updates uh, first. Who yeah. would you like to start with? Well, um, you know, when we talk our Cats in Crisis campaign, it is so encompassing because mm -hmm. it's not only all those animals we need help rescuing, but it's the care everybody helps give here, too. And so we've got some happy updates. Um, Josie, uh, our little office cat upstairs, which too bad she isn't down here yet. Um, she will be moved down here for a few days during some construction, but her cone came off. Yes. She is cone free and she is happy. Elated. So uh, we just have to remind her to not mess with her. What was come on? What was her um, her surgical site? And so uh, that was great. Uh, Tigger the Bengal, who's our a Bengal that was surrendered for uh, biting really bad, not Oreo biting, but <laughs> <laughs> biting really bad. Was living in our intern bunkhouse, but Olivia, um, your coworker, will be starting and bringing her dog on site for a few months. And so Tigger moved to the hospital with Dr. Campbell over um, yesterday. And, you know, Dr. Campbell's very excited to have a cat in the hospital. Um, so that's Tigger's temporary home. Uh, Lloyd, uh, the Savannah, now many other sanctuaries have done this. We've never mixed savannas with servals um, just because our savannas have done so well with Bengals. But Lloyd is a very, very large savannah and has a very servalesque personality. Mm -hmm. So we are uh, working on crate training him so that he'll go into his crate for food and then hopefully trying him with some servals through a shared mesh wall and eventually, if that works, uh, merging him because wow. he's just been too bold and brazen for um, other savannas and Bengals. So. That's great. I know people were asking about Chili. Mm -hmm. um, we had done some That's play exciting. dates with his family, and if you're a sponsor uh, parent, we are working on getting photos, and you should get an update soon from Julie. But he, as this time, is fully merged with his family. And again, that's Chili. Chili the Serval. Chili the Serval. With Ava and the Peppers, okay. so Hal and Bell. And um, as everybody knows, that's uh, Chili who had severe metabolic bone disease. He's an uh, amputee. He's uh, very non-traditional. He can't extend that other back leg. And we thought, again, he would be submissive and we were worried about getting him picked on. And yet he was the dominant. But uh, the news is that him and Hal were curled up yep. in uh, one of the dog loos together. Uh, so it, I knew that eventually they would get over that. He's not scary just because he's non-traditional. So that's really good news. We keep monitoring it. Yes. It takes a few weeks to know. Um, and Indy, our little tiger that got spayed, she's been a very good patient, but definitely a little stir-crazy in her indoor room, no matter how much enrichment and bone she's got. So today she is going to get full access back to her yard. Awesome. They're going to watch her along with... Um, Nova, uh, because we're at the seven to ten day mark where it can be itchy and things, and we're more worried about her stretching and going up uh, on the fence. Okay. So they'll watch for that, but otherwise she's very close to being um, done. Uh, you know, medically wise, besides some um, kind of end of life comfort care that we're always doing for some of our geriatrics, you know, Zeke, we talked about the tiger Zeke, had his third eyelids up. He's had chronic GI issues and had CT scans and things. Um, we were not too concerned about his eyes in the beginning. We thought maybe the allergies, the air quality, um, but then we noticed some lesions forming on his eyes, kind of like ulcers. And so he's on antibiotics. We've reached out to an um, uh, ophthalmologist. Uh, his sponsors will be getting an update too, but we have scheduled an ophthalmologist appointment who will come on site and then we'll evaluate next steps to see what's causing it. It's a, it's a little... Um, 
it's puzzling, I should say, to mm -hmm. all the specialists that have looked because, uh, you know, it doesn't look like an injury or something. It could be an autoimmune um, okay. response is what they're thinking, especially with his GI. So we'll keep everybody posted on that. But he's acting like himself and rolling around, and that's all we can ask for. So, um, And then Edgar and Josie, as I mentioned, will be moving down to our our uh, my office for the next couple three days and then love i don't remember where love's moving is it lynette's office love, I was, yeah love i believe is coming down to be with lynette <laughs> and um then these guys will stay out here and because we are redoing the stairs for the animal care center um doesn't seem like a big deal but there's a uh, indoor outdoor carpet kind of on there and um, everything keeps sliding off the stairs, which when you are going up and down all the time, all the runs. And so we are redoing the stairs. Um, and so we will not have access to our upstairs for a few days. And exactly. so all the cats are coming down. It'll be a full house down here with and, staff and everything. And usually, you know, it's a lot of construction happening out on the grounds, but yeah. here it is <laughs> in the animal care center. Uh, speaking of construction, uh, I was just walking down the alleyway in between Dash and Alyssa and then Dash and Tarek and Polina and the drainage is sorry. complete back there. <laughs> yes, so that project, <laughs> that, sorry, I'm picking the dog, it's the mom and me. Um, uh, that drainage got done. Tarek and Polina tend to, Tarek we always talk about, Yeah, he destroys every habitat he's in. He's he a big patroller. Um, and so he was causing some really heavy muddy spots and so we're glad that we got in there and that and it's again It's one of those things that from the outside doesn't look like a lot but to dig deep down drain tile I think they brought in six or seven loads of sand and things um, So now it's all it's dry there, which is great That's one of the things that I can kind of gauge the you know people who've been following the wildcat sanctuary for X amount of years is when they know what the flooding is like in the spring. <laughs> well, the flooding, the ice, the yeah. storm, you guys. Uh, Kiara's a little muddy, so we're wondering <laughs> yeah. where Kiara was. But yeah, we... Um, so when I see them getting as excited about that type of construction <laughs> as like a, a, per, a, you know, making a perch for a cat, I know no. uh, they're yeah. tr true blue lovers of the wildcat so, Well, and we have other things going on. We talked about some of those uh, cases that might be in the works. Mm -hmm. um, and so part of our Cats in Crisis campaign is not only rescue, preparedness, all the stuff that people bought off our wish list, thank you so much yeah. for that donated, but we have a volunteer crew day. Even over the 4th of July weekend, our staff is gonna be working 24 seven, just like they do, um, have people on site, and we have volunteer crew days, and they're gonna be working on a temporary habitat. Um, it's kind of the last thing that was uh, damaged in the snow, Mm -hmm. But we have, it's outside of our quarantine area, outside of, you know, our regular things. It's probably an enclosure our followers have never seen. But we always have these temporary habitats up around the property in case of an emergency or in case, let's say we had a fire or we had a fence, something, uh, fence damage and we had to move one of our cats. It's part of our crisis um, camp uh, planning that we do here. And so they're going to be kind of fixing that final um, thing. Mm -hmm. And then I know you and I are really excited because we've been trying to work on um, our new security system outside. That's correct. And updating some of the Wi-Fi so that uh, our followers don't have all well, the Well, exactly. Is, is that included in that is, like you said, a security system, which will help us, but also um, is, a, is a potential for like an eagle cam, if yep. you will, where it'd be yep. a 24-7 live stream and I know we've done stuff like that on YouTube, but this would make it easier for the media person because yes. it's truly hands-free. Hands-free, yes. And uh, so that's very exciting. We're excited, we, but we are cautiously optimistic because just True. like everything else, there's been back order on antennas and this mm -hmm. project was supposed to start and like then, early June yes. and um, now we're looking at end of July. But uh, the antennas are not in the United States yet, but we've been promised that they're going to be ship and go through customs next week. So we're really hoping that that happens. That's very exciting. <laughs> very, very exciting. Yeah. Well, and inside we've been um, interviewing for hospital managers since Joy moved home. Our hospital manager moved home. So we're keeping on that. We really always want to find the right fit. Um, you know, we know we're in a rural location. We know we have extreme winters and so we want it. And we have a lot of animals. So we, we're being very thoughtful on that as well. And then with Olivia starting yep. next week. Um, new face and a new, or 
Maybe a familiar face and a familiar voice. And we've had to say goodbye to our interns this week. Many of our, we call them winter interns, even though it's summer. Um, It is their end day this week. Mm -hmm. So we had a potluck uh, with them yesterday. We also had our ash release ceremony yesterday um, where we were all um, getting to celebrate the life of the cats that we lost over the last six months and then releasing their ashes in wildlife exactly yeah i didn't i because i always just like updating everybody on everything if i can on live posts and did get a chance to to mention that we did do our annual ash release ceremony and and uh, obviously a lot of special cats and and special memories shared about those cats and so definitely kind of a, a somber day but a but a day of kind of reflection and and just reminding us of what we do and why we do it yeah well and then the happy times is We talked about um, not only remembering those that have passed, but all the new cats that have Mm -hmm. joined us and all the new toys that they're going to get to join. We're going to start passing more out next week. Um, We're kind of doing it with the cleaning schedule, uh, things like that. Uh, We we had service done on the freezer, so as we told everybody when the van broke down um, and we had to redo the meat, we had done three loads of meat that week, uh, and then the freezer stopped working. Yeah, guess what happens when we pack our freezer <laughs> so, yeah. so, uh, that was, uh, very challenging. So everybody that's donated and continues to donate to, for us to meet that second $30,000 match is huge because we definitely need a van, and, um, we've already started the process of trying to see how we can get close to our dream van that we want. Mr. Oreo is uh, strategizing to go after Kier, <laughs> obviously. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's amazing because it's, uh, the equipment might not seem exciting, but it is so exciting to us when you guys support it. When those uh, new UTVs came, I mean, it was like, I've never seen the staff so excited that they actually have UTVs that go in reverse yes. and forward. A lot of our UTVs don't go in reverse. Um, and then the van, you know, it's it's on borrowed time. Uh, Jesse was amazing to be able to fix it for some short runs, but we could never take it on a rescue or out of state or anything again. So um, that will be much needed. Uh, and it's just, we did get another golf cart. So that will, that's, that's, that's helpful exactly right. um, with people's donations. And you can't see behind me, but we have so much from you guys from the- I tried to bring cats, the toys yeah, into the frame. Cats in Crisis wish list. And um, I was busy labeling everything with red tape and saying it's uh, crisis equipment. Uh, not that we couldn't use it if we had a really huge uh, issue or need here at the sanctuary, but it's stuff we want designated. So it's a grab and go type of thing. If we need that chainsaw on the road, we're not looking and finding a chainsaw that, you know, was broken and not been fixed yet it's this is ready for us and ready for us to share or drive to anybody that's needed um so everything's labeled and it's going to have its designated spot and I, i'm really excited about it because i'm excited when sanctuaries work together and yeah. we already work together so much on rescues and so we're already talking about um and we all know that we will go help each other in any time of need we've given each other relief keepers we've helped <laughs> care <laughs> But to make a more formalized plan and um, memorandum of understanding of equipment and things that we all share that can be deployed. I see you've got a a fan base there. And and Emery is trying to get close to Oreo. And it's so funny because she sure tries and Oreo's looking at her like (laughs) Oreo looks at me when I try to kiss him. That's definitely a familiar look. Yeah, so it's, it's, um, it's an exciting time, but I will tell you, I... It is stressful. I feel like we're making a movement forward in our mm-hmm. industry, but whenever we make movement forward, I always say it gets wider. So like for a while it was the unreleasable wildlife, which mm-hmm. you know we never thought we'd be taking in wild born cougars that couldn't go back out. And now it's a small cat crisis. You know, and now we're also seeing in our industry um, facilities choosing to close and place animals or facilities having to downsize due to health issues and lack of staffing um, after COVID. It's been hard to get people to work. And so it's just challenging. It makes me reflect on, again, how blessed I am to have the followers, supporters, donors, volunteers, and staff because we're, we don't have any plans to close. We don't have any plans to... Um, to downsize, mm-hmm. you know, we don't have plans to double in size uh, because we want to keep that individualized 
care and psychological well-being of the animals, but uh, it's, it has really underscored why we're doing our succession planning, our strategic planning, um, and as I talked about, after the 4th of July, a lot of our uh, donors and supporters will be getting questionnaires and um, ask for input on some of our core strategic values so that as we move forward and things might look different after the Big Cat Public Safety Act, like what what do we want TWS to be doing? Yeah. How do we want to be fulfilling our mission? And so um, as our supporters get that, I uh, really, really ask that they would take time to fill out that questionnaire because everybody who donates here um, needs to have a say yeah. in what the future is and what it looks like for the animals. So. Exactly, yeah. They're they're stakeholders in essence and and you know I think Tammy the wildcat sanctuary we you know you've been operating for over 20 years and next year's our 25th anniversary yeah which is absolutely well, amazing big, big party. a quarter century that's <laughs> incredible um, but exactly that is you've seen it evolve you're seeing these nuances and you're not staying flat-footed we're we're changing we're adapting and we're wanting to make a difference for how this has evolved and yeah. how there's different ways that we can help. So yeah. makes me proud to be where I am <laughs> well, and, and our supporters, you know, see that as well. Well, and I don't often get to um, thank Jensen, but you know, this last couple of weeks, getting the small cat crisis video out, getting the cub trafficking video out, um, that is so important. I think the live posts are wonderful because we get to engage with all of you, but those tools of those videos that are on wild, uh, watchwildcats.com is what people can share with legislators, with zoning people, communities, with anybody else to really teach that there is still these issues out there and we have to work to solve them. And I think the way you do videos in such a compact way, but so impactful, is what those sound bites, what a lot exactly. of people need our, to hear. Our little toolkit for, yep. for everyone to go out and And then make I a know uh, when Olivia comes, we're going to be expanding our yeah. cool toolkit on, because um, we've been asked from animal control of how do I tell a savanna from a serval, from a bengal, how do I know when it's a hybrid? So we're going to um, do much more specific toolkits for those that are on the front lines identifying and coming across those cats. So oh, awesome. Awesome. Well, well, Tammy, I'm I always I, always a pleasure. I don't know if we can move. We have the I, whole house. I was going to say I might be locked. Here. I'm locked <laughs> down here, but um, you know, I think you know today's it's been informative. It's been enlightening. I think uh, it's you know not hard to tell how much of a difference you guys uh, make here at the Wild yeah. Cat Sanctuary when it comes to campaigns like we're in now, like our Cats in Crisis campaign to just helping out our general operations and upholding what we do for the cats here every day. Yeah. So. And we hope you all have a safe and uh, happy 4th of July. We're going to be working here and one of the most common questions we get is yeah. do the fireworks bother the cats? And I'll say one of uh, one benefit of being in the middle of nowhere is that we don't, we've never seen or heard fireworks out here. But we do have gunfire and things during hunting season and the cat, it doesn't bother the cats at all. So. No, it doesn't seem to bother anybody, but you're exactly right. That's one of the, the beauty of uh, being out, <laughs> in, uh, out in the country is we don't have to worry about any, yeah. of, uh, any of that type of noise. And, and like you said earlier, kudos to caretakers. It's the holidays, my favorite holiday of the year <laughs> where I get to be out in the sun and do whatever. And the, the, the sanctuary being staffed 24-7, 365, um, definitely always worth acknowledging our staff yeah. who is here on holidays and, and caring for the cats even on a, on a summer holiday like the 4th of July. Kiara, I am going to be wrapping <laughs> it up. And Ori over there. Uh, um, and uh, on behalf of everyone here at the Wildcat Sanctuary, thank you for tuning in today and uh, looking forward to seeing you back here next week um, for more Wildcat Sanctuary content. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Oops. Oh, just get up, Missy.